Hello, my beautiful soul fam. It's an honor to be in this space with you today. As you can see, we're in a brand new studio, which I opened a few days ago. And in order to celebrate this new space, I wanted to share my story, my journey into the practice of yoga. A lot of you have asked me about this journey over the years, and I think that this is a great opportunity to share that journey with you and to connect with you in this space. I started practicing yoga in 2020. Prior to that, my only experiences with yoga were in studio classes or in classes in gym settings in America. But yet, I discovered the full practice in 2020, in the middle of lockdown here in the Philippines. It was when the world was shut and I was in a very, very, very bad mental space. Now that I look back, everything happens for a reason. And as the Kybalion says, chance is but a name for a law unrecognized. And when I look back at that time, it was at a point in my life where I was going at 200 kilometers an hour. I was going so fast with my work in nightlife, in festivals, in business. I never had a practice to center myself and to come back and ground in. When the lockdown happened, I was in a whirlwind of negative thoughts. I was always watching the news and freaking myself out with everything that was going on. The energy was very, very, very intense at that time. And one day, I was in my home gym where I opened an account with Alo Moves. And as I was exploring different classes, I found teachers that I resonated very deeply with. Ian Finn of Blissology, Carling Harps, Patrick Beach of Awakening Yoga. Shout out to you three beautiful teachers. And as I was just discovering more and more and more of the asana practice, I began to notice changes in my thought patterns, in my beliefs, in my general overall feeling is that whenever I would take that time to spend a few minutes with no stimulation, no phone, no chatting, just going inside. Because I couldn't go outside, I had to go in. And moving through the practice was when I truly felt like I was reconnecting to my physical vessel, my human body. And as I continued on with the physical asana practice, I realized that it was accessing something and activating something within that was in the realms of my subtle body, the energetic body. Because we are all infinite souls in human body suits. And we need to use the physical in order to access the infinite. And I began to developed a very, very deep curiosity. So I would study asanas, I would study the arm balances for hours and hours every day since my work had paused due to the economic restraints of the situation at the time. So I used that time to go in deep, to invest in different courses online. And that's the beautiful thing about this connectivity is that we can access these courses anywhere in the world we are. And so I really got into anatomy, I really got into the philosophy of yoga with no intention of teaching the practice. I had no intention of becoming a yoga teacher. I was simply curious about how I could learn about the practice so that I could de further develop my personal practice at the time. Then I signed up for the 200-hour awakening yoga training, 
with Carling Harps and Patrick Beach. I would study every single day. I would spend hours on philosophy, hours reading the Vedas, the Upanishads, the Yoga Sutras. And I would sit in meditation and enter the realm of endless possibilities. And it was in these moments of meditation where I would observe all these thoughts arise. My mind was so busy at the time. In other words, I was worshiping my worries, drowning in complexity. And as I would sit in meditation, I would notice the thoughts arise, observe them without any judgment. And in this practice was when I experienced the breakthrough. And the breakthrough was that my mind was so hectic. My inner landscape was upside down, as above, so below. And that inner turmoil was reflecting out into every single aspect of my life. And sitting down in meditation was when I realized that we create our external reality through the thoughts, emotions, feelings that we experience. And through yoga, I realized that we are all the creators of our realities. And to take these moments to slow down, and sit in meditation, without any self-judgment. My self-esteem throughout my life has always been in flux, programmed in a way where I was always so insecure and always doubted my abilities as a leader and as a, and as a person. And what yoga taught me was to seize all negative self-judgment to be more gentle to myself, to listen to my body, to practice compassion to myself, to practice kindness to myself, to not push myself over the limits. It woke me up to all of the programs that I had been exposed to throughout my life, like this notion of how our pro productivity determines our self-worth, which is a complete and utter lie. And as I was deprogramming from all of these negative thought patterns and beliefs, I really arrived in a place in my practice where I truly embodied breath, movement, and energy. As I was studying with Carling and Patrick, their enthusiasm for the practice was infectious. I was noticing people in my community really struggle with the lockdown. And so I thought to myself, hmm, maybe I should offer classes to my community and to my friends after I wrap up my 200-hour training. And as I was wrapping up my training, I opened up a Canva account and created a small little poster uh, to share with my community that I was teaching yoga via Zoom, online yoga classes, on a weekly basis. I went in with it with no anxiety, with no insecurity, I just went for it. This was right when I got my certification. <laughs> and I was so surprised that a lot of people signed up for it. And I was very moved as well that people would take the chance on me as a new teacher because I really had no intention of becoming a teacher. I really wanted to understand the practice so that I could embody it into my being. But as I started to teach, I realized that my energy and my frequency would rub on people in positive ways that my love for all people, for all sentient beings, would transmute out of myself as a being. 
And after that first Zoom class, nothing has been the same ever again. The week after that first Zoom class, I got my brand new camera, a tripod, microphones, and I started this YouTube channel. And when I started the YouTube channel, I had no expectations. I had no expectations of how it would go. I just wanted to share my love for the practice with all those who crossed my path. And I believed that I had a unique perspective on offering yoga with everyone who crossed my path. And I had called my brother to help me learn how to use Premiere Pro. I suddenly became a sound engineer, director, creative director, uh, the teacher, everything behind camera and on camera. This is all me. I am a one-woman show. <laughs> and every week I would film classes out of the passion and love for the practice. And hoping that it would land with someone in a positive way and hoping that it would shift someone towards a positive direction in their life. And as I was creating and sharing, I went further inside myself. I went further into my, my mental internal landscape to renegotiate my relationship to myself. I was experiencing imposter syndrome, which is the self-doubt. It is a belief that you are not smart or good enough. And as I let go of those emotions, and at first I would just feel it in my body, how it would feel, and it would manifest somewhere in my shoulders, my heart, my lungs, my solar plexus. I would feel it, experience it, and let it go. overcoming the imposter syndrome as a yoga teacher. And I, and I see a lot of my colleagues experience the same thing, is in a world where we're hyper-connected, we fall into the trap of comparison, comparing ourselves to other practitioners, to other teachers, and it's an unhealthy habit because we are all unique, with all unique gifts and the way one person shares the practice from their heart center is going to be completely different from another person who shares the practice from their heart center. And having come to that realization that I can be the tuning fork of my own experience and that I can share this practice freely as long as I don't doubt myself, as long as I believe and know deep inside that what I have to offer is special. And that shifted me in really profound ways. It shifted my confidence, it shifted my ability to just drop into my practice without any kind of comparison. It made me embody the asanas. It made me come back into every cell of my physical being, into an act of self-love. And I knew that I couldn't share this practice unless I learned how to love myself. Because if you don't love yourself, you can't expect to love anyone around you. And it's absolutely true that the beginning of healing really starts with love. Love is the greatest healer of them all, but that especially means self-love. This practice has healed me in many, many profound ways. I seized all judgment of myself. I seized chasing goal after goal after goal and understanding that it's all about the journey and not about the destination. How you do one thing is how you do everything. And that is what I love so much about this practice is that it shifts us continuously, as long as we're able to drop down into our center, as long as we reconnect to our soul. And in that, we are reminded of our interconnectedness with all things in the universe. 
and to constantly remind ourselves to be that which is needed. That which is needed through the pillar of unconditional love and unconditional non-judgment. This practice has taught me to observe and not react. Many people think that what yoga is is stretching, and it's anything but that. It is a practice to expand our consciousness. And our greatest contribution to the collective is to become more conscious. And becoming more conscious, we begin to shift not just ourselves, but everyone around us. And that person begins to shift everyone around them. It's all retrocausal. Everything is connected. There are no such things as accidents, only synchronicities. And coming back to my mat and, and dropping down into meditation, it allowed me to realize what Richard Rudd had said about enlightenment, and that enlightenment is a series of softenings. And showing up for my practice each and every single day made me realize that in order to change my world, I had to change myself. My system, my nervous system was always on fight or flight, always in sympathetic mode. And then when I learned how to recalibrate, to recenter myself in a busy world, that was when everything started to shift for me. From studying under awakening yoga, I discovered the magnificence of neurology and have since incorporated functional neurology to the asana practice and the meditation practice as well. And it's really about slowing down and staying connected to your breath, giving yourself the permission to breathe, giving yourself the permission to move, and allowing yourself to recognize that you are the medicine. You are your healer. And for those of you who are thinking about starting your yoga practice, create a sacred space in your home where you will be undisturbed, uninterrupted. And practice meditation for a few minutes a day. Just allow yourself to empty your thoughts. And if thoughts do arise, let them. Observe them without any judgment. And really focus on your breath. And if yoga studios are available to you, I encourage you to find a teacher that you resonate with, that gets you, that vibes with you. Because it's always important that you find a teacher that vibes with you. It's so important to find that teacher, that guide, that facilitator who sees you. Or take online yoga classes. There are so many amazing online studios that are available out there that you could access and practice at home. So many amazing resources out there. So many texts to read, the Upanishads, the Bhagavad Gita, the sutras. They're all available at the palm of your hands. It's all about just being curious, being so curious that you allow your curiosity to eliminate the path for you. Know that the best teacher is your inner teacher. It is the teacher in you that knows what is in alignment and what is out of alignment. And to manifest things that are in alignment to enter into your field as if you already have it, because you do. And drop the comparison, drop the negative self-talk. Ask yourself how you parent yourself. 
on a daily basis. And notice what you say to yourself when you look into the mirror. Is it something encouraging? Is it something that's loving? Is it something that's harsh, critical? And when you look into that inner parent, that voice, can you change that voice? Can you allow yourself to give yourself the grace and the love that you give to others? Because that's going to reflect into your practice and that's going to reflect in every aspect of your life. And yoga is not about flexibility at all. Yoga is about your connection to self. And ever since 2020, it's been an amazing journey from then. And I'm so grateful to all of you who have subscribed to this channel and have supported me in this journey because I see you, I feel you, I love connecting with you wherever in the world you may be. And it's an endless journey. Everything always changes. Nothing is ever the same. And that's what's so exciting about this practice. And that's what's so exciting about having a practice that could ground you in. And I'm forever grateful to my teachers, to the people that choose me to be their teacher, because it is the greatest honor of all. I'm sending you so much love, bliss, peace, wherever in the world you may be. Thank you for being here. And thank you for raising your vibration.